Welcome to my lecture online. This is the same type of problem we saw in the previous video, except instead of having a voltage source, we have a current source. Again, the switch opens up. After the switch opens up, the current source does no longer play a role in the rest of the circuit and the current through the inductor. We're going to do things a little bit different here in that we're not looking for the current through the inductor, but we're looking for the current through the 2 ohm resistor and the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor, which of course will depend upon what's happening through the inductor. So how do we begin? Well, let's start again with finding the current through the inductor before the switch opens up. Before the switch opens up, we have 24 amps coming through here. We get to the junction right here, and then notice that to get back to its original position right here, we need to go through the inductor and this resistor. No current will flow through the 3 ohm resistor because this is essentially a short circuit which eliminates the 3 ohm resistor from the circuit before the switch opens up. So all the current either goes to the 4 ohm resistor or the 2 ohm resistor. And the current going through the 2 ohm resistor is the same as the current going through the inductor. So the way to find that is to take the total current, which is 24 amps and multiplying it times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch which is the 4 ohm resistor divided by the total resistance across the two branches which is 4 plus 2 that's 4 sixths or 2 thirds of 24 amps which is 16 amps of current flows through the inductor before the switch opens up. What is the voltage initially across the 2 ohm resistor? Well, whatever the current is going through here, notice that the voltage is going to be the current, I through the 2 ohm resistor, right like that, times the resistance of the 2 ohm resistor. So in this case, that's going to be equal to the 16 amps, because it's the same current as go through the inductor, 16 amps, times the resistance of 2 ohms, which means we have a 32 volt drop across the 2 ohm resistor, before the switch opens up. Now the switch opens up, what will be the current through the inductor at infinite time? So the switch is open, this no longer plays a role, now we have current flowing through the circuit that's on the right side over here, and eventually the resistance will take out all the energy of the circuit, and zero amps or zero current will, will flow through the inductor. So that'll be, well, I already have it here, I sub L equals zero. Now, once the switch is open, we want to find the equivalent resistance of the remaining circuit affecting the inductor. So we're looking for the Thevenin resistance. Notice, starting from one point of the inductor to get to the other point, either we go through this branch right here, or we'll go through this branch right there. So we have two parallel branches, and the resistance is going to be the product of the sum. So that's 3 ohms on the one branch, and 2 plus 4, or 6 ohms on the other, divided by 3 plus 6. So 18 divided by 9, which is 2 ohms of total resistance for the inductor after the switch opens up. Therefore, the time constant is the inductance, which in this case is 1 Henry. So that's equal to 1 Henry divided by 2 ohms which is equal to 0.5 seconds. So we have a time constant of one half of a second. And now to find the current through the inductor, we do the following. Let's see here. Well, I guess I didn't leave any room. I'll do it down here. So I through the inductor uh, at time equals, well, at any time after the switch opens up, is equal to the current through the inductor at infinity, which is zero, plus the current through the inductor at time equals zero, which is right here, which is 16 amps, minus the current through the inductor at infinity, which is zero, times e to the minus t over tau. Now tau is going to be 0.5 seconds, so 1 over 0.5 is 2, so minus 2t. And so that will be the current through the inductor at any time after the switch opens. Okay, once we have that, now we can find out the current through the 2 ohm resistor, because if we have that much current going flowing through the inductor, the current is going to split between this branch and this branch onto the other side. And so then we can say that the current through the 2 ohm resistor is equal to this, I sub L T times the ratio. Now, let's see here. So, from here, going back to here, we can go through this branch or we can go to this branch. So we take the resistance of the other branch divided by the total resistance. 
So the other branch is 3 ohms, and the total resistance would be 3 plus 2 plus 4, which is 6. So that's 3 over 9, which is equal to one-third the current that we have over here. So if we simplify this, this is equal to 16 amps times e to the minus 2t in a simplified format. So then we plug that in here, so we have 16 amps times e to the minus 2t multiplied times a ratio of 3 over 9, which is one-third. So that gives us, this is therefore equal to 16 thirds e to the minus 2t times amps, if you want to put the units of amps on the outside. Okay, now we want to know the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor at any point after the switch opens up, which is equal to the current times the resistance, so that will be I across the 2 ohm resistor as a function of time, multiply times the resistance, and so this will be equal to 16 thirds e to the minus 2t amps, like this, multiply times the resistance of that, that would be 2 ohms, as you can see that this will be equal to 32 over 3 e to the minus 2t and the units that case, of course, will be volts, and that's the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor after the switch opens up. So you can see that, again, you will have to find the current through the inductor, you will have to find the voltage drop across the inductor, and based upon that, well, I guess we didn't have to find the voltage drop across the inductor in this case, but at least we have to find the current through the inductor, and then you can find the voltage drop across any of the other resistances, and so this is an example for one of them. And that's how it's done.